continue shaping this armor. Again, just to recap, all I'm doing is just moving vertices around and shaping. You'll be doing the same in yours, trying to get the best fit that you can. You know, take your time. Just there's no rush here. This is you. You know, the potter playing with the clay, and that's all you're doing here. It's just you're the potter. This is your clay, and you're just gonna keep molding it until it's something that you think looks really nice. And this 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 is the part of armor you know creating armor that takes a long time a lot of repositioning of the camera you know or well your perspective view to get the best view you can now this is something I wanted to cover here remember the problem areas right by the arms I don't want to have to deal with them so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move my armor away from it um, so that way when I skin this I don't have to worry about it sticking to those arms so I'm just going to move away from it and always try to keep things asymmetrical by looking at what you're doing from both sides uh, the front here I kind of want to make this more narrow you know, so it looks more like a bra instead of just a strap so I'm going to select the vertice uh, near the bottom as close to the bottom as I can select and I'm also going to hold down control and select one near the top I'm going to right click and go to scale and on on the up and down plane you see there's different planes here I'm going to use the Z plane which is up and down in the perspective window I'm going to drag it see how that works you know, and I want to make sure that the curve stays pretty decent so it doesn't look fake so I'm going to increase my fall off to a 10 so it looks more smooth when I scale it some more yeah, sometimes releasing it and then reclicking it helps uh, you know resize the fall off. That's looking pretty good there. Yeah, look at that. That's nice. I'll leave it right about there. Looks pretty good. Nice little curve in it. Uh, the sides here look like they could have some work done to them. I'll take this back down to a seven and uh, right click, go back to my move tool and just size some things up. You know, click here and move this up. Uh, kind of created a hump here so I'll click there and move that up as well. And as you can see this is very easy. You know I'm just selecting one vertice, moving it a little bit, looking at it, kind of deciding if I need to move something else. So I move that side so let's go ahead and move this side now make it asymmetrical that up. Kind of, kind of created a curve here. So I'll slip back here a little bit. Move it up. It's all about you and what you want it to look like. You know, yours probably looks a little different than mine. That's fine. You know, it should look how you made it. You know, it should look like your armor. It shouldn't look like my armor or clothing rather, since we're working on clothing. Um, move that in a little bit. And the more angles you check your armor or clothing at, the better you can fit it. Oh, see, I got a little collision right here. It's another thing you always want to check for collision. Uh, that's why we froze the UMP body so we can make sure while we're forming it that we're not colliding. If you collide, it's just a matter of selecting a vertice near the collision and moving it out from the body. All right, that looks pretty decent for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh oh, little collision near the bottom here. Select here my camera so I can make sure I select the right angle and move it out on the X. All right, doesn't look like it's colliding anywhere that I can see. It's very important that you take your time. Uh -oh. A little bit of collision here. Move it on the X and Y. There we go. That's a little better. Check the other side because it's probably doing it too. Usually, if something's doing something on one side, it's doing it on the other. Oh wow, it's way in there. There we go, it's a little better. Hmm. Since I did that and I didn't drop the fall off, now I need to move the bottom and drop the fall off to like a five. Well, that didn't work. Yeah, five will just select the bottom. So I'll select something on the bottom here and move the bottom in a little closer. And try to round it off right here. There we go. It's a little better. Now even if it does collide by a very minimal amount, 
it's not important. You know, a little bit of collision ain't gonna hurt your uh, armor or your mesh. It, you know, it's like just a, it's just barely clipping it. You don't have to worry about that. That's not gonna hurt anything. Now with the five select, remember, the more accurate I want to get, the lower the fall off needs to be. The fall off uh, controls how many vertices are selected. So you can really get right up on your, uh, you know, your body just by changing the fall off to a s little bit smaller number. Uh -oh. If you ever accidentally move the wrong vertices because you click vertices behind, just hit control and Z and that'll undo any mistakes that you just made. You know, or you can go up here, select undo, or click edit and select undo. You know, it's just like any program. If you mess something up, you can always undo your last step. Alright, that looks pretty nice, yeah? Looks pretty smoothed out. Very nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, hmm, I think I can get a little closer. XY. Move that a little bit more in. Remember, this is all about checking your angles here and making sure that everything is on just the way you want it. There's no rush. Uh, the more time you spend moving your vertices around and shaping them to the body, the better it's going to look in the end game whenever you actually uh, are done and you're ready to start uh, playing with it in game. So, uh uh. Right here, I can just select the vertice right there, because that's where it's colliding, and move it out a little bit. Select the other side. Okay, it didn't do it on the other side. Alright, so zoom out at it, deselect it. I'm going to deselect my vertexes, kind of move around. And that looks pretty nice, huh? Hopefully, uh, you know, when you get to this step, yours will look just as nice. You know, it'll probably be different, of course, because it's yours. Mine looks pretty nice. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the next step. First thing you want to do is you want to right click. And uh, we want to go ahead and hmm, let's convert it to a mesh. So right click on with, uh, with none of these selected. You have your editable poly selected. You know, that's this. Oops, I froze it. Unfreeze all. Freeze the body. That's my mistake. Don't do that. Select your uh, your armor or your clothing. Right click on it. Go to convert to editable mesh. Now it is an editable mesh. I'm ready to start playing with uh, with the editable mesh. So first thing I'm going to do before I take any other steps, before I skin it, before I do anything else, is I need to unwrap the UV. The UV is basically the pleat that we're going to be painting upon. Okay, so when we paint on this armor, we need to unwrap it so the paint goes on it correctly and doesn't overlap from one polygon to another. So when you paint on one part, it's not painting over here too by accident. Unwrapping is an essential step of creating armor. You always set the armor up exactly the way you want it and then you unwrap the UV. So to do that, with the editable mesh selected. I'm going to go to my modifier list. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to select unwrap UVW. It'll be in your modifier list. Unwrap UVW. I'm going to select that. Now with that selected, I'm going to open my UV editor. It'll be in edit UVs, open UV editor, and you'll see this crazy looking screen. Uh, now if it looks like everything's fine, see it's going off the edge of the UVW here. So this this isn't good. I need to get it you know, more central. A good way to do that is to uh, select this down here and arrange elements to pack normalize. If you select that, it's going to reshape uh, everything. It's going to put everything inside the UV map. You want everything on the checkered board. And as soon as that's all taken care of, you know, you, your UV is mapped onto this. Good. And again, that was all I did was I clicked pack normalize one time. As soon as you've done that and everything's on the board looking good, I'm going to select X. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to right click on my editable mesh and I'm also going to convert it to an editable mesh. Now it's been converted to an editable mesh with a correct UV map. So when I paint on it, it's going to not overlap and the uh, it's going to make the paint look better uh, on, you know, the DDS texture is going to look better on it. Now let's go ahead and skin it to the body, then we're going to export it. Uh, so I'm going to right click on my screen, I'm going to select uh, Unfreeze All, 
and I'm also going to right click on my screen and I'm going to select unhide all. All right, you want your bones showing before you skin wrap. Always want your bones to show and your nothing to be frozen when you skin wrap. So now that everything's unhidden and unfrozen, I'm going to go to my editable mesh. From the modify list, I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to select smooth. It's not going to smooth it again. It's already done that. So I'm going to select smooth. Look, it looks all messed up. Don't worry, because when you click smoothing groups 2, this is going to prevent it from exporting or changing the vertice locations in any way. Now with Smooth selected, I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to go to my Skin Wrap, select Skin Wrap, Deformation Engine. I'm going to drop that down and select Face Deformation. And I'm going to check Weight All Points because I want all the vertices to be weighted when I skin it. Then I'm going to Add by selecting Add, and I'm going to click the UNP body. That's going to take a little, uh, little bit to do. Uh, sometimes it'll be instantaneous, and if that ever happens, then don't worry about it, you're good. And then just click Convert to Skin. Now, a good way to check to see if it's skinned, you know, if it actually skinned onto the body, is you can always click on Edit Envelopes, and then select something close to your armor. See, I selected that right around the waist, and I can see it all went red. That means all these things are set to this. You can also select another thing, like another bone. Uh, like an arm bone to make sure that you don't see anything yellow which you see right there it's kinda yellow so remember how we fix this in order to fix this there's kinda yellow right here in the back I don't want it connecting to that arm so I'm going to go up here and select I'm gonna select vertices I'm gonna select all the vertices near where it's yellow I'm gonna grab this little pane here I'm gonna drag it up in an absolute effect I'm going to type a zero in and press enter. That's going to get rid of that. Now let's check another bone in the arm. So I'll click this bone in the arm. Uh, they're kind of bluish, but looks a little yellow like right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do an absolute effect. I'm going to type a zero, press enter. I don't want this moving that under the arm. And since I, I checked this one, I'm going to check this bone. All right, nothing is attached with this bone. But just to be safe, you can always just absolute effect hit zero and press enter yeah, and that'll assure that you're not and then I'm going to move over to the other side because that was one side and I saw it was connected a little bit I want to make sure the other side isn't and nothing's yellow there right, so I'll select the upper bone check it I don't see anything yellow on this one so it looks good I'm going to select this bone here on the arm make sure nothing's yellow yeah, this side skin's good this side is all good. So now I'm going to deselect all of the vertices, drag this up, and I'm going to click Edit Envelopes. Now we can delete the skin wrap, so we're going to select skin wrap, right click on it, delete it, select the skin by left clicking on it, drop down my modifier list, and I'm going to select BS Dismember Skin Modifier. Click on that. Now I want to make sure everything's selected, so I'm going to drag my mouse over, uh, with the left click until I have everything selected, release, everything is selected, and in body part I'm going to drop this down and select Skyrim Torso 1. Now if you don't have Skyrim Torso 1, I did an annotation, it's Skyrim comma main body. A lot of you, a lot of you have a NivScope version that has Skyrim main body or it's Skyrim Torso 1. It's always uh, Skyrim's main body or the Skyrim Torso 1. Either one of those options will work because we're working with the main body. Right, as soon as that's all done, we're ready to export this, so we don't want to deselect anything. Remember, we want to just go ahead and click Create, and now we're ready to export. And it looks like uh, we're about out of time for this video, so just hang 10 and go ahead and move on to the next video, and I'll show you how to export it and where we're going to export it to.